If you've lived in Red Wing for a while, you've probably looked at a street, building, or location once and thought, I wonder how that place got its name. Names matter, and in a town with as rich a history as Red Wing's, some places hold historical or colloquial names stemming from captivating community chronicles. However, few today understand those backgrounds. Join me as we stroll through Red Wing's quarters and ask, what's in a name? Education is a building block of our society, and Red Wing is lucky to have both a good school district and Minnesota State College Southeast within our limits. But did you know that Red Wing once hosted six other post-secondary institutions? Red Wing citizens founded Gustavus Adolphus College and Hamlin University before they moved elsewhere and Beesman's actual business college functioned downtown in the late 1800s. Three different colleges also existed at the top of the present-day College Hill neighborhood. College Hill begins up the appropriately named College Avenue, stretching through Oak Street, Williams Avenue, and West 6th Street. The name College Hill refers specifically back to the first institution built on the hill, the Red Wing Collegiate Institute, that opened in 1871. Little is remembered about this short-lived college. Eventually, the institute closed, but Haug's Norwegian Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, commonly shortened to the Haug Senate, purchased the campus. In September 1879, they opened the Red Wing Seminary on the Collegiate Institute's former grounds. Red Wing Seminary functioned as the Haug Senate's premier theological institution for training ministers. The school originally consisted of a sole structure called the Old Building. Over the years, the seminary erected more buildings, including Summer Hall in 1892 and the signature Main Building in 1904. Also in 1904, a junior academy was established, followed by a four-year college in 1910. Women were admitted in 1914. In 1917, the Haug Senate merged with two other Norwegian church bodies. Because of this, the seminary part of the institution transferred to Luther Seminary in St. Paul. However, the Red Wing Seminary continued as a normal college with a high school academy, school of commerce, school of music, Bible courses, parochial courses, and pre-seminary training. In the 1920s, the school even had a men's football team, a men's and women's basketball team, and a band. In 1932, the Red Wing Seminary closed after much debate from church leaders, and St. Olaf College in Northfield enveloped the curriculums. Today, the Red Wing Mayo Clinic Seminary Home sits where the Collegiate Institute and Seminary once stood. Another Lutheran school graced the top of College Hill the Lutheran Ladies' Seminary. Opening in November 1894, this seminary provided women with a more formal education to foster Christian growth and learn the skills the mostly male head faculty members deemed important for their lives. At the turn of the century, that meant Christian homemaking and how to be a cultured mother and wife. There's a reason this school was nicknamed the Pastor's Wife Factory. Women were only allowed to leave campus once a week, and they needed parental written permission to be visited by gentlemen friends. Yet the seminary did not solely reinforce oppressive patriarchal standards for women. Courses in history, religion, literature, geography, arithmetic, and language provided opportunities for women to learn skills that could break them free from the Midwestern household's chains to pursue careers in teaching, religion, and music, and many did. The seminary's Conservatory of Music, led by Bernhard Lunkhart, had an outstanding choral, piano, and violin program. A separate music hall and auditorium was built in 1908. The seminary's octet singing ensemble even toured. Unlike at Red Wing Seminary, where the population was almost 100% Norwegian, 
The Lutheran Ladies Seminary student body was made up of Norwegians, Germans, Swedes, Danes, and Finns, a northern white European smorgasbord. But most students and faculty were German, so during World War I when anti-German sentiment rose, the school was berated with vitriol. The seminary's president was even forced to resign. In 1919, an arson attempt did heavy damage to the buildings, and a second fire burned the school down for good in 1920. The former Lutheran Ladies Seminary campus is now the site of the Red Wing Golf Club, where you can still discover fragments of the seminary's foundations. Besides serving colleges and the residential neighborhood, College Hill is also the site of the old city hospital complex. Originally the home of Civil War veteran and part owner of the Red Wing Republican newspaper Samuel P. Jennison, the city transformed the estate into a hospital in 1898. Two additions would later be built, the Old People's Home in 1914 and the Frederick Edition in 1924. After the hospital closed down in 1967, the Goodhue County Historical Society moved into the old folks home in 1969. The Frederick Center has housed multiple businesses and nonprofits throughout the years, but now remains empty. So now you know what's in a name for Red Wings College Hill neighborhood. Formerly the center of higher education in Red Wing, it now sits as a residential neighborhood and the location of the Red Wing Golf Club and the Goodyear County Historical Society. That was a lot of information, but don't worry, there'll be no college level pop quiz today. Thanks for watching.